It's in the bottom left side of Lula Crest. The blue Protoss player looking for the comeback. Showtime. In the top right as the red Terran. It's Liquid Bunny. So, again, I know that we're not going to share the opinion with the majority of chat, and our goal is not to win over chat on our side or anything like that. But again, a lot of discussion on balance, imbalance, and all these things. And this is that start time of an expansion. Things are broken. There was a community update post just recently. There's a balance test map, like live, where they're testing changes, like making Adepts armored and all these things. It is. It is going to be imbalanced, is the thing. I, I, however, I like that imbalance quite a bit. It was kind of boring watching some some of the HOTS games. And while we didn't get to see it in game number one, and Zombie Grab and I actually talked about this during the break, where we would have liked to have seen Disruptors, say, instead of Storms for Showtime. Either way, Terran versus Protoss, in my opinion, is one of the most fun and epic late game battles if both players are good enough to get to the macro late game. Yeah, I agree. I think the imbalance is that... Uh that can exist for both sides or truly what makes like a, a fun matchup because that was probably the most fun we've had in Legacy of the Void was seeing the game get to a later stage where it was Disruptors versus Liberators. Um, so like a one hand like, oh my god, he killed 20 army supply with one Disruptor shot, like OP versus like, oh my god, Liberators can't be touched, so OP. <laughs> uh, there is a game where we saw mass adepts look like they were going to win the game, but then Liberators came out just in time and actually turned the game around. That type of imbalance versus each other is... is Probably the most Actually, fun you can watch in a matchup. I'm thinking back to it when, when Legacy was still in its earlier stages of the beta and we had Top versus Night End. And Night was End went the one? mass adepts, like like forty adepts versus like a tank line and still beat those tanks. Oh, There's I know. Hell bats with yeah, blue yeah, yeah. flames sitting on top of the tanks and like it was ridiculous. It was crazy. Back when uh people were still experimenting legitimately with mech. You left if someone's dead. Oh, is that why it's doing it? It just gave a 7% battery warning. Yeah, I was wondering why it was turning on and off. But, uh, there's nothing I can actually do about it right now. Okay, I just thought I'd let you know because you didn't see it. Oh, it popped out, that's why. <laughs> it slipped out. I thought the, uh, <laughs> wow, it's rude. I thought the, just the, like, the outlet doesn't work. Because actually, like, a lot of the outlets A lot of the outlets in this work. house do not work. And, like, half the ones that do work, for some reason, have the bottom outlet blocked. So you can't I, use both. Uh, yeah, I don't know, so. I just didn't question it, but okay. I guess... Hopefully it's charging now. Uh, anywho. Oh no, I'm being told uh, I jinxed Nurcio. I hope he's not out. Oh no. Let me check what the uh, brackets do? really quick while we got the scouting going on. Of course, if you guys haven't seen the brackets yourselves, type exclamation brackets. Yeah, he lost to laser. Son of a gun. Damn it, Rifkin. Well, no. The universe heard you with the opposite thing. You know what? The opposite thing was now right, though, so I'll take it. <laughs> that bums me out, though, because I really like Nurcio quite a bit. Uh... Mm. Not not <laughs> for his personality that a lot of people know him for, but definitely for his playstyle. Oh, Showtime gonna oh, get a little bit now. dirty though. Oh, uh, following up with the Oracle, of course. Oh, actually, this is clever. Going for the uh, Mothership Core gets the lock on. Very important. She recalls. Now these pylons need to be canceled. Bunny, that was because so, if he had locked onto the Adept, doesn't matter. But locking onto that Mothership Core was freaking him insanely huge. Yeah. That's the difference of losing his natural yep. or not. That one move. Yeah, having to lift up his natural. That was very important. That's why the Cyclone seems to be the best option early game versus Protoss. It does that lock on to the War Prism. It does lock on to the Mothership Core. It also is very good at units that are retreating. We have JTDC donating $10. Donating again. Rifkin, I want to see a double bot from you to you. <laughs> I have to hit myself twice with a hammer? I like this guy. <laughs> what the f JTDC, man, I thought we were bros. I thought we were going to be lifetime friends. We'd be on a porch together, sipping on iced tea. Both our wives are dead, old age, and we're just old, lonely coots. And then you do this to me? Ugh. Man, well. Damn yeah, it. Fantasy is not real. You're the one who said, no one would have requested if you never suggested that. This is all your fault. Well, no, I was reading chat when I when it's asked. Someone no, asked. No, I believe it's your fault. Whatever, man. I didn't see that in chat. Whatever. The Cyclone, also good at dealing with oracles, if you don't yeah. have uh, what a mind's militia core. Or, uh, Mrs. Hertz, that's the word. Uh, actually, so just to talk on that really quick, we, we, we really brought this up several times in casts, and this was made more evident in TVT than any other matchup, but I really want to drive home how big of a deal Cyclones are, how much of an impact they are having on the matchup. Not because you go 40 or 50 of them and be super OP, but they are really good defensive units. One Cyclone can shut down so much in the first 10 minutes of the game. 
So that was a really bad revelation. <laughs> I think I think he was just using what he could before. Yeah, yeah right. Um, but it's still alive, and then, you know, we didn't even, I don't even think we saw on the production tab, even though it does, is it on the production tab, unlike Overlords transforming into Drop Overlords, the uh, Stasis Wards, they were, like, really good last game. That was a game that he probably would have lost five minutes earlier if it wasn't for those traps. So to have the Oracle alive is actually, it puts me in great faith for the defensive showtime. Uh, who is going for, once again, this kind of passive game. They both are, once again. Now, this time, Bunny is not getting a third CC and really delaying Stim, but it's still a case where it's going to be maybe, like, eight minutes before he really pushes out. It will be a tank push with Bio, but it is still, you know, a little ways off. Showtime has some time to scout this and react to it in whichever way he chooses to. Not a very big map, even though it is cross positions, so whenever an attack from a either one of these guys is going to occur, it's going to hit pretty quickly. I uh, shout out to Strayfos for the 17 month reset, by the way. And sorry for the lack of contribution here. Uh, when I wear these headsets, guys, like it really hurts to wear these for long periods of time with glasses. I, <laughs> I really miss my Corsair headsets right now. I can wear those all day with glasses. Ah. Uh. Sorry, I'm just adjusting a lot, basically. Um, so th this tank count is surprisingly high, I gotta say. Yeah. And yeah, I think he's just waiting for the, the stim and combat shield. So yeah, about like an eight minute push when he actually makes it over to Showtime. Now Showtime has already kind of reaped the benefits from a third base. So I think the tools are there to defend against a push like this, but it's, you know, like with most tank drops, you kind of want to delay it, even though or most tank pushes, you want to delay it, but now tank drops exist, so it's a little bit harder to do that. Hard to swarm the unseached siege takes a long time. Well, not so much. I mean, like the worst part of using tanks. I mean, the, the the strength of blink versus whatever is still the same. Legacy like, wasn't hot. It's just, immortals not having heart and shield are are so much true, less yeah. of a straight up counter. I mean, immortals were specifically designed to counter tanks. That's their entire role of existing in the first place. Yeah. Now that they've lost the heart and shield, it's not really the case anymore. They're still oh. useful against them, of course. They'll tear them down real quick, and with that barrier, they'll still take shots from units in general, right? By breaking down his rocks, he bought a little bit of time. Actually, blinks forward and loses a good chunk of soccer to take out one tank. Was it worth? I'm not sure. Then Immortal trying to get some shots off. Not quite going to be able to get through these rocks yet, but uh, as the rocks get broken for Bunny, it does actually open up for the Adepts to like, transfer on top of the tanks, get into that dead zone and fight yeah. from there. There's also just a pincer move that Bunny must be aware of right now, where Showtime could come behind with the Blink Stalkers. Uh, oh, maybe not in the case, though. I mean, direct engagement. Yeah, there's, there's really two ways to break tanks. Get on top of them into the dead zone to get around them, but Bunny is going to be absolutely well destroyed. <laughs> I don't think he was expecting so many Adepts as the problem for this, and if he was, I think we would have seen more Marauders, less Marines. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this push... There's nothing he really could have done to make it faster. I mean, maybe if you start the tank oh, push as bad. soon as you have tanks. Liber Liberator, please it save us. It kind of starts a snowball effect, but he wanted to wait for Sim and Combat Shields. That's a That's hard cap on your timing. And it, by the time he pushed, Showtime was like totally ready. Yeah, and I think Bunny thought at some point he'd thrown a third CC down, but that stasis uh, trap caught the ASV a long time ago. So this is bad. He doesn't have the third CC behind this. His army is almost non-existent. His upgrades are behind severely. He's hoping on Liberators to save him, and truthfully, there's not that many Blink Stalkers, so maybe Liberators could save him. Maybe. But those Adepts are going to be so hard to deal with no matter what. Picks up with the Phoenix, that one tank. But yeah, tanks, uh... Ugh, not going to be able to deal with the Stalkers. I, well, you got to say, like, between Buddy's Freeze and the last game and this game, I really like the mass widow mines over the tanks. Huh, getting a bit lazy at the last second there. Uh, does take a huge blow to his army, and... Bunny does hold those liberators. They made Showtime rethink a little bit. They made him kind of the the engagement a lot more clumsy too for both sides. And uh, Bunny holds as well as pulls Showtime's army supply down to his level. Well, as you say, the problem is though, Bunny's still behind on upgrades for this pretty severely. I mean, we got armor now coming out for Showtime. Well, it's not gonna be anything like the two-two dynamic we yeah. saw for Bunny in game one. But it is pretty important to know that these Marines, these Marauders, are gonna start falling off as a uh, he falls further and further behind. Oh god, more donations. I'm scared this to read. This time, it's J JT 
DC, turning $5. Rip Gina just had to do it. Have a bop on CG. So two on me, one on you. I think JTDC just wants to cause physical pain to us today. Like Apparently. It's like the nicest... It's like, the, it's like you know, tough love, but this is just mean love. <laughs> and uh, my cuckoo... My cuckoo. Cuckoo cuckoo. I was going to say, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> my what cuckoo. Are you <laughs> just reset for two oh. months in a row. <laughs> I didn't see it. Like, the monitor is now officially blocking all of chat as opposed to yesterday or whatever. Good a little do. Oh, Jesus. Alright, so the third base is acquired for Bunny. The army supply is still really isn't that bad, and the upgrades are technically still even, although plus one armor is about to finish. Uh, oh, that's bad. Time. All the Marines have to go to the main to respond to this. You can't ignore the adapts. This opens the door for the stalkers to get into this base. SU's gonna try and command, uh, repair the command center, but. Bunny's army's now split and have to deal with this. Tanks are rushing back to defend. Adepts in the main finally getting cleaned up. And that war prism's still alive. Yeah, that could have gone worse. Of course, you get the war prism. That's such a you know relief for Terrans, but didn't get the war prism. Bunny is like that. He's once again kind of playing. <laughs> he did that big tank push, so I can't call it passive, but it is that point where he's being the defensive one again for sure. If he's the defensive one and he started the Liberator production, you know, two minutes ago, and he gets to those eight to ten counts of Liberators, his army is suddenly pretty damn good. Like, enough that it can kind of be that turtle that rarely exists in Legacy of the Void. As you as you can see, Bunny's already mined out of his natural. I mean, his main's completely mined yeah. out too. But Third. if he can get to that many Liberators, then it's hard to deal with. Third's like crazy oversaturated. Meanwhile, Showtime's on a fourth very happily. Yeah. And the big thing I'd say is he's had map control for a very long time. This War Prism's kept Bunny at home for so damn long that Bunny's not been pushing or dropping one medevac full of Marines or anything like that. Yeah, uh, he is coming up on 2-2 two -two, though, so what's nice is he's evening up those upgrades. This was something where I was really worried he was going to be behind. Uh, but, you know, there's a Fleet Beacon, there's a Dark Shrine. Showtime's kind of got the option to do whatever he wants behind this. But this is the perfect time for Bunny to push out, whether he knows it or not, how perfect it is. Yeah. You have invested into so much stuff. Dark Shrine, Second Forge, Two Star gets a Fleet Beacon, and it hasn't actually paid off quite yet. One or two Tempests still wouldn't be quite enough to deal with the high Liberator count we see now. If he could ever get into an abusive position. Unfortunately, oh. like with tanks, you have to kind of leapfrog with the Liberators. You don't want to just go forward <laughs> willy-nilly. You dropped a mule to repair, but then it didn't put it to repair. <laughs> okay, well, that's a little awkward. There's no disruptors to actually stop him from just pushing forward, although there are storms. Oh, the storms, okay. yeah. Unfortunately, it's a lot of Marines and not many Marauders, so it's kind of hard to dive through those storms. The War Prism kind of could run into the... Oh, Bunny Rally! He needs to push now, though. Like, he definitely can't pull back from this War Prism. I'm worried about this, though. The army supply is looking pretty big on both sides of this. Bunny's got very little workers and no economy behind this, so it comes down to him a lot more for Bunny. He's got to win with this push. He's got to kill yeah. a fourth base with this push. He has to actually do serious damage with this push. No matter how you look at it. A couple of zealots being really hard to kill on the other side of the map. Clean up the oh, Marauders. Why is he the I mean, this well, this is a pretty big spread, actually. So this isn't too bad. Stalker's going to have a hard time blinking in the range for this. It's true. It's a very good spread. It also stops storms from attacking up on them. But now oh. it's, it's actually three times so at that time. I didn't realize he had three stargates. Today I learned that uh, the C supports kind of buildings, I guess. You couldn't actually shoot that from the right. So with three Tempests at a time, it's like... I think actually Showtime has bought enough time to, to push this back, but it is still up to control. He's kind of getting choked into this base, though. Like, if that ground army dies, it doesn't really matter though if it's Tempest. The Marines will stim into them. He's going to get the Nexus, and it is still a delicate dance. The Tempest certainly outrange uh, everything here. Oh, but I like this. He has to be very soon. He sees the storms just, on the high ground waiting for him. Uh, yeah, just kill a fourth and, and... Oh, but you know what? While this goes oh, on, Bunny yeah. got gutted at home. So... Just looking away for a second. Looks like Adapts, DTs. Yeah, it was DTs oh, got Jesus. across the map. So now Bunny has to win with this. This is all in, do or die. He's lost all the SCVs at home. Storms are doing too much damage to this bio. It's really weak. And these Tempests are getting cleaned up. GG. Showtime going to tie up the series one to one.